Okay, so today we're going to replace and program a Dixel controller. Hopefully you'll learn a thing or two about a thing or two. First up, you want to make sure that you have the right controller. So if we go down here, you can see that you have a number right there. 4N1P-U. Also up there, you have the supply, right? So you have 4 and 5. You can see supply right there, right? So that means that's where your power comes in to power the controller. So if you look up there, it's 120 volts. So we need a 120 volt replacement for that guy right there, which is right here. Nope, that's 230. See, it's 230 right there. It's the other one that I have right down here, which is 120 volts right there. So uh, we'll get moving on that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop out those, um, those harnesses and we're gonna pop them right in here. We're gonna put this one in there and then we're gonna program it and get it going. Okay, we're just gonna go through this kind of quick. So, uh, you know, these were taped. I removed one of the tapes. So make sure to take pictures when you do it. So the red one is going to go to number three. The black one's gonna go to number four. The neutral is gonna go to number five. And then the line one is just this other black one. So this line one is the power that is gonna be utilized by these relays here. You can see relay one, relay two, and you can see that by these little switch um, map on the Dixel controller. So we have this power that goes in, and this power is gonna go through, and you can see that it's connected right there with that line. It's gonna go through those two relays to load one and load two. So now we come over here, this is a little sheet that came with it for our universal. What are we gonna do? Well, I wanna do I just want to throw this in there so it should actually be TC number four. So I accidentally said number three in the video because I was looking at the wrong menu. And I explained that further in the video as well. But I just wanted to run through this super quick. Um, you know, it should be TC4. Now, if we zoom in on here, we can see, and this is what the map looks like. Well, the wiring diagram looks like on the back side of the controller. And I just wanted to show you like a close up where I could draw and stuff. That you can see this line one comes in this line one is responsible for as you can see the wiring diagram there it's going to go to these two relay points the relay points three and four and you can see three on this configuration is responsible for the compressor now you could set up two to be responsible for the fans or responsible for something else based on the configuration and i'll show you that in a minute now obviously we also have the supply right here which is three and four I mean, which is four and five right there. And we can see that's 120 volts. So in our case, we put five on the neutral and then we put, you know, the 120 power on four, right? And then over here, you can see that if we wanted to, um, it's actually unnecessary and ends up that we don't even need the alarm portion of this, but I'm still setting it up. We can put power on there to sound an alarm on seven. And then this is the normally closed one right there which doesn't have to have anything on it right and then up here as i mentioned i was mentioning this we have uh these two temperature probes the room temperature probe and the evap temperature probe now the room temperature probe all that means is it means your case okay this could be synonymous with case okay room is just the area in which this thing is meant to cool okay and then the evap coil is obviously you know your evap coil okay that is what the temperature probe is on. The reason why that's significant is it's going to use the room probe. It comes stock using the room probe to decide whether or not the compressor will turn on based on the temperature, okay? And then it will use the evap uh, uh, probe stock, like that is what it's normally set up for, on whether or not it will temperature end the off cycle defrost, okay? So what it does is it gets to a certain temperature. In our case, you'll see it later as I as I put in the Piper case, it's gonna get to 42 degrees. When that coil is at 42 degrees, this EVAP sensor you know, goes, oh, it's at 42 degrees, and then it has a temperature and a defrost on off cycle, okay? And you can see if we come down here, for T6, it has a fan relay, and it'll give you more options for the program. Okay, and you can see down here, it even has, it looks like a defrost uh, relay over there, right? So now, like, let's say you could have some contactors set up. So you could have some contactors set up. So, for instance, we could put a contactor for, um, 
uh, you know, you could, we could put a contactor for the compressor, a contactor for the fans, and a contactor for the defrost. So you could have electric defrost in your case, and everything could be controlled by your Emerson controller, you see? And so you can see by reading these different applications and looking through the wiring diagram on here, you can kind of figure out what's going on. So as long as you're, you know, I would recommend if you're going to be putting on, you know, right even here, it's even more generic where it just says, you know, load three, load one, and load two, right? And so you could have three different loads on it. This is the most generic you can get. And up here is a little bit more like this kind of showing you what it is. And you can see that this one has a fan. This one has a compressor. This one has a defrost functionality. And I would recommend, as you can see, you only have five amps. If you have so many, and this one over here is only three amps. So if you're having that many, um, you know, that much amperage going through it, it might be wiser to connect it to a... Um, you know, to a contactor coil and then run your power to the actual devices through a contactor coil. And I mentioned that uh, through the contactor itself. And I mentioned that later on in the video. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention is this last one, which is a DI point. Uh, you don't have to have that, but that's a digital input point. So you can program this to have some type of, let's say this is an on or off switch, and you can program some type of functionality to it with the digital input point. And that's, you know, further than the scope of this video is right here. Anyway, we're gonna get back to just kind of the hands-on and wiring it in, we're gonna go back to that. Look at, we got our neutral on five right now. So you just count one, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna put the other one on this three. So that's our supply. So that controls our controller, 120 volts to our controller. So it controls that. Then on this side, we have our line in, which gives voltage to our relays. And this is the, the side that's gonna go out to the compressor. So that's gonna go on one, two, and three, like so. And this harness is actually terrible, um, absolutely miserable, probably one of the worst harnesses I've ever had the displeasure of using. You stick it in that hole right there. I thought it would pop out. It doesn't seem to pop out. You stick it in the hole, and then you just tighten those down, and that's it. It's actually incredibly difficult, terrible. You can see the wire kind of sticks out. I'm doing the best I can with it, but it's awful. now. The sensors here, right? So if you look at, we have EVAP, we have room, goes right there on 12, and then we have PB3, which goes on 10, and both of them land on 11, right? So if we want our room one, this is 12, lands on 11, and then we have our other probe, which is 11, and then it lands on 10. And you can see that right there. So both of them, they share this middle, um, this middle pin number 11. So we have one on 12 and one on 10. So also, just wanted to mention um, these little clip things right there. They go on this way like so. It's kind of hard to see. But you can see that that just slides right on and it doesn't come off. So to get these off, you actually have to take the screwdriver push down on that side and pry. And then they come right off. Fairly easy. So you just push them on and that keeps that secure. It sandwiches it between the lip and that keeps it secure, good to go. Well, I wrote when this is replaced because so these units are having issues with um, overdrawing out of it. So, you know, there's only so much you can see that there's five amps there, you see? It says a five amp limit. So if that compressor is pulling continuously six, seven amps, it'll actually destroy the relay inside here and it'll blow up the control. Um, so I've, you know, I've actually gone to places that have a bulge out of the side of the controller for where the relay overheated and it arced out. So I'm putting that there. So if we figure out that this case is having a problem with an overamping compressor, the manufacturer has actually said that we're supposed to install, install a contactor so this will actually power the coil of a contactor and then we're supposed to rewire the case so that there's a direct, you know, 120 volts to the compressor. That's beyond what we're doing today for the video, but just thought it worth mentioning. All right, once you get that installed right there, we're then gonna have to go to the programming. So we're gonna have to compare it to what the manufacturer wants to do in the actual case. So I actually had to call Piper and have them send this to me. So if we look it down here with these notes right here, you can either store it, 
You can either use the temperature probe in the in the, in the supply air, or you can use the temperature probe in uh, in the discharge air, or you can use the temperature probe in the coil. So we're just going to use the temperature probe in the discharge because it's easier to work with this controller, and we're going to set it so instead of 22, we're actually going to set this to 30 because that's what it says to do up there, and then we're going to set all of these to equal it. So we're going to set the differential to 12. Uh, calibration we don't need any uh, defrost termination probe is present we don't need that because it's already going to be chosen um, the compressor cycling we're going to have to change that um, and the type of defrost this is not electric defrost um, this is not maybe this is how you set it on this controller but on the controller that we're putting it's not electric defrost so we don't need that it's just time off and then defrost termination is 42 interval between defrost is 6 and then maximum defrost time is 60 right there so if we look at our directions we can download the manual by zooming in on our app guy now that we have the manual we can see and we can go through and actually say all right what needs to be set for what so we, we already picked down here so we need to set this TC thing to 4 why because we have cooling off cycle defrost and it's temperature ended and there's an alarm relay, right? Those are the things that we needed. So we needed to cool the product. It's an off cycle defrost and it ends at 42 degrees with a maximum of an hour and an alarm relay. So we need this whole TCD for four. And then we're gonna go down here and I'm gonna show you how to do that because it has a startup right here. So there's a startup procedure. I think I might, may or may not show that in the video. I don't know. I've taken so much footage of this to try to figure this out. But anyway, so obviously you install it and turn on the power. Then within one minute, you um, hit down. You know, you know, you hit set and down. It'll automatically select the temperature probes, and then uh, you can change this TC by clicking on that, uh, holding that for three seconds. And I think I already kind of showed that. Um, like I said, I'm not sure how I'm going to put together this footage, but I'll put it together. On the TC, so how did I select the TC? Um, so a couple things. So one, I looked at the parameters that the Piper case cares about, right? And number two is I looked at how the controller was set up. The previous controller that was in there, the stock controller, what was connected to it? All that was connected to it was two temperature probes, and a compressor. Then I opened up the EVAP coil and I'm no longer at the store so I can't show you. And I looked to see if there was defrost heaters in there or anything that might activate defrost heaters. There's not. So we can conclude, you know, based on matching up, you know, what wires are connected to the actual device and the fact that there is no defrost heaters in there, that it would have to be an off cycle defrost. Um, and we can also throw it into a defrost and see what it does. Um, but if we also look at the previous um, controller that's in there, there's no fan connection, so it's not turning off the fans during defrost or anything like that. So that, that's what leads me to you know conclude on number four. Now, we could maybe even get away with number three, now that I'm thinking about it further, because uh, on number three, it just says, you know, cooling, um, off cycle defrost temperature ended and uh, there isn't an alarm hooked up to this controller so we actually probably could have got away with number three but I, I set it up for number four and there really isn't no harm no foul because there's nothing connected for the alarm for number four on points six seven and eight so it doesn't really do anything so anyway I'm going to show you now uh, that I am going to because to I, I set it up previously before I knew this and I went through this um, this startup procedure outlined up here by turning off the, the equipment and then holding down and then hitting set and then going through and then setting the TC and we're just going to view that really quick and then we're going to go back to the menu and I'm going to explain a little bit more about it. All right so we're here so we're going to hold this down one two three one into that all right and then now we're going to go over here to TC one two three and TC three okay I'm just gonna set it that's good T 
TC3. There we go. Now we're gonna hold set. One, two, three. And now that's 36. We're gonna move this down to 20. And I'll go into why I'm doing that in a couple minutes. All right, then we're gonna hit set. And then I just wanna double check this TC, TC3 right there, okay. So I just wanted to show that because I wanted to show how to do this, um, not not this right there, this uh, you know quick startup right here. That's just how you do it. So you so you know you turn it off, you turn it on, and then you do the procedure that you just saw about holding set. You know, uh, and then you hold set and, set and down, and then you hit TC, and then you hit set. Now I set that to TC three, and that was actually a mistake I made because I was actually looking at a completely different. Um, manual by mistake because I didn't scan the manual before I looked at it so I was looking at a different one but we did discuss earlier that TC3 would have worked just fine um, as we discussed um, but I do end up putting in TC4 because if I'm honest TC3 would have been better because um, there isn't an alarm relay hooked up as I mentioned but I just went with TC4 because it's what I did so for the rest of this video I'm probably going to refer to it as TC4 and that's just because I'm kind of retroactively going back and editing and trying to make this better for people to understand and what I learned. And um, But anyway, so I'm not presently at the store anymore, so I can't really, you know, like go and correct that or whatever. But anyway, so we're going to get moving on to uh, the secret menu. With the secret menu, and you're going to see how to go into the secret menu. So in order to do that, you, um, you hit... Um, down and set for three seconds and then you wait a second and then you hit down and set for seven seconds until it flashes with the PB that is how you know you're in the secret menu and you'll see in a couple minutes um, but if you do the secret menu you can actually adjust this TC term right so even though you can still choose this uh, TC value um, if you go into the secret menu for this rather than uh, you know doing the startup procedure um, I believe I believe you still need to unplug it and replug it in or you know turn off the power turn it on I believe you have a window now I think that accessing the secret menu um, has a gives you a a wider window to access that don't quote me on that I think so but you still have a, a certain window so if you just go over to a unit that hasn't been touched in like two or three weeks and then try to do that it's not gonna allow you to have access to the parameter menu or the secret menu now mention on this table you can see on this table right there there is seven options here you see one two three four five six seven across the top and it shows you what parameters are set for what uh, TC value that you put in, right? So, you know, if you have on and off cycle, and you can see, like, for instance, uh, compressor start delay right here. You can see that all those are grayed out because it doesn't apply to those ones. And you can see down here, maximum defrost duration, right? Those are all, you know, blurred out because they don't apply for T one through t5 right there so when i when i go through the video i actually say something in the video which is um oh you know these are the things that we care about it's not that we don't care about everything else but everything else is set up in a stock way which should be adequate so if i look at the piper case the piper case cares specifically about these 12 values and then all these other values already have appropriate inputs put in uh, you know, for the T4 setup, okay? So they already have like generic inputs that are put in to to, a, to have an appropriate program to run the case. So we only care about those, you know, five or six or however many it is, you know, um, parameters that is outlined by the Piper case manual. So I just want to throw that in there to kind of give you a broader understanding of it. Now we're going to go through the video and we're going to program it. And we're going to keep moving forward. And I hope this all makes sense and blah 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 just a just a proposed together correctly and uh so now what we're going to do is if you look over here you can see the label of everything how everything is labeled um so we have the differential that we need to change the low limit upper limit which it doesn't give us anti-short cycle which we also need to do and then for the defrost we're going to come down here to the defrost 
We have um, what is it displaying during defrost. We want it to display defrost. And then we have um, down here, uh, which is oh, up here just a little, a little bit. Right here, which is everything we need, which is maximum defrost dur duration, which is an hour. Then we have an interval between the defrost, which is six. And then we have defrost termination temperature, which is 42. We're gonna come down here, and we're actually gonna hit set and down. Hold that for three, one, two, and three. Now we're gonna take our hands away, and then we're gonna hit set and down again. We're gonna enter a secret menu. And I know this from another manual that they have. I don't think it actually says it in that manual. Well, at least I didn't see it. So there we go. So this TC, as we mentioned, we're gonna set that TC to four. It's cooling, off cycle, temperature ended, alarm relay. So that's set to four, so set, good to go. Now we're gonna go through. And we have, um, we're gonna go through and we have a low set, which I put for 10 and an upper set, where I put for 68. Actually, we're gonna put that upper set we're gonna change that to up a set. We're gonna change that to, we're gonna hold set on it, and we're gonna change that to 72, okay? If that gets to 72 degrees, it's probably not okay. Anyway, now we're going to AC, which is the compressor cycling, which we know is supposed to be three according to the Piper menu, and now we can kind of go through and find the other things we care about, which is Interval between defrost, which is six. Uh, this is uh, maximum defrost termination time, 60. And defrost termination temperature, as we saw from the menu earlier, which is 42. And then DFD is what will it display during defrost. And number three corresponds to displaying defrost, and we saw that from the menu. All right, and that's everything that we needed to do. So. In order to set it up like Piper, we have to target a... Oh, I also forgot to do the HY. The HY, just got to make sure that HY is in there. Let's see where that is. HY right there. 12. So in order to set it like a Piper case, we had to have it target a 30 degree discharge air with a 12 degree differential, which is the HY. Defrost for six hour intervals. A maximum of an hour defrost terminates at 42. Now this thing is set up like pipe case, like it's supposed to be, and we just used a universal replacement controller from the local United. Anyway, hopefully you learned a thing or two about a thing or two. This one was a bit of a doozy, took me a bit. I'm gonna have to edit all the footage, put it all together. Hopefully I'll get something salvageable that I can send to the interwebs and maybe you'll learn a thing or two about a thing or two. Comment below if you have any easier ways to do it, any ways to help. Also, remember that secret menu. Three seconds, setting down, and then seven seconds, setting down. Anyway, hope you have a good one, and that's how you do it.